Hi folks, I've done a bit of research on this engine now and it doesn't seem like it's an 850. Keep watching. So this engine I was told by the previous owner, which was a spare engine, uh, was supposed to have been an 850cc. After the research we've done on it, I found an online forum there and there was a, a database of all the separate engine numbers. It turns out this was a 1974 700cc engine, May 1974. So it's not an 850. The original one, as you know, was a 600cc. And I've got a pretty, uh, I've got a sort of a decision to make because I'm not too sure whether or not to go with this or go with the original engine. The only problem I, I said with the original engine was, was that the, the, the box on it isn't the Synchromesh gearbox and I was really after one of them. Well this being a 700cc engine should have the same gearbox mounting or the same gearbox as the uh, 600 model but this one as Dan Clift quite rightly pointed out after a bit of research uh, this one looks like a, a, an 850 gearbox and I'll show you for why. Well, if we actually look at the gearbox on this one, you can see this actuation arm on the gearbox bell housing goes right the way through there. And this operates the thrust bearing, which obviously uh, the release bearing for the clutch. So it goes right through there. And that is attributed to the 850 gearbox. I, so I'm told, I think that's correct. And if you look at the earlier gearbox on the, the 600 engine, which should have the same gearbox as this, this is the 600 engine and you can see the actuation arm for the gearbox comes out lower down under the starter motor down there as you can see. So this is a non-synchro gearbox which I didn't really want to use and my only dilemma is is that I wanted a 850 engine for more poke. 700cc may or probably do it but I do know that everything is on this engine uh, and this was actually a runner with all the ancillary parts for example like the uh, starter motor. This one has a different thermostat housing there as you can see and it's only got two props on the front whereas the 700cc one I've got here it's got a triple plastic prop on the front and the uh, the actual uh, spout there comes out for the uh, thermostat housing at a right angle. The bracketry I think you'll be able to find of I think I'm assured that you'll be able to fit an alternator on here with no problems so my way of thinking here is that this actuator arm needs to be able to marry up with the pedal to the pedal I'm not sure if it has or not it's obviously been cut there as you can probably see whereas the actuator arm here has some sort of uh, hole there and I can't quite remember what the shaft was like on this one I'm not sure whether uh, this will be able to marry up I don't see why it shouldn't do to be honest with you but I'm, I'm, that's something I'm obviously going to have to investigate as well. The engine brackets are in the same place as we know they're right at the front. So it's no problem there. You've got an engine mount in there and an engine mount in there. But on the back of the gearbox, you can't see it here, we've got one big circular engine mounting, which is rubber mounted, which a bolt, one bolt goes straight the way through there. Whereas this gearbox mount here has two separate uh, mounts, one either side and they look to be rubber mounted there, so I would need the bracketry for this to fit. I probably would imagine that I could use this, and I would imagine this would be a synchro box. So I'm probably going to use this. The only other thing I've got to remember as well is that this one doesn't have a carburetor on it, so I'd need to source another carb. Not unless I could use the carb off of the 600, I'm not too sure. So if you've got any information on that, anybody, please let me know whether I can use the 600 carb on the 700. I would imagine they're pretty much the same engine, so I would hope that would be the case. So I'm hoping that this gearbox is an 850 gearbox, which will be a synchro gearbox, which means that um, I will probably end up using this. So the thing to do now, I think, is to start stripping this down. So I think I'll take the gearbox off first, which is gonna have to come off anyway. And I'll put you on time lapse for that, so I'll see you in a minute. Oh, 
Okay, right, that's all the bolts out of the gearbox now. Now, technically speaking, I should be able to give it a gentle tap. And hopefully, it should come separate. Easier said than done. I haven't left any bolts on, have I? Right, there's a gap appearing this side. Ah, there we go. Just stuck on the input shaft, I would imagine. There we go. Right, this probably hasn't seen the light of day for ages. Right, so. Oh, the cable's got caught down that hole there, look. Let's spin that gearbox around. And just sit it there for a minute. And have a look at what we've got in the bell housing. Right, so as Dan Clift quite rightly pointed out, this looks like the uh, the later type of gearbox. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, if you're watching this. So someone's actually fitted the later one by the looks of it. That's the thing with these, they're not too... Um, there's no weight in that at all, look. Nice and light. So that's the gearbox. Right, okay, I don't know the last time these have been out. Definitely not in the uh, six or so years that I've had the van. They're quite tight. A bit dry the threads so this will be an interesting thing to see on possibly the condition of the engine uh, how it was running pre removal they look to be old plugs in there so I'll say there was uh, the original ones well that's a promising sign that looks lovely light brown in color mixture was actually perfect on that one by the looks of it so that's a good sign Let's hope the rest of them are like that. Clip to the distributor. And the lid gets in the way of the last two plugs. So I'm hoping that just by taking that off can allow me to get in there. Yeah, there we go. Only just, mind you. That's quite tricky, isn't it? And again, I'm hoping to convert this to... Um, Electronic ignition, they do a distributor kit apparently, so um, that's something I would be looking into. I don't want to have to keep setting points and stuff like that and uh, altering the ignition timing, so I'll definitely be looking into that. Again, yep, gaps look a bit small, I would suggest, on that, but uh, again. Colours, pretty much okay. Don't think you can see that, can you? And the final one. So apparently they did a 600 engine on the early ones. They did a 700 engine. They did a 750 engine reliant. I didn't know that. And uh, obviously the 850, which went into the later Robins and... Uh, Rialtos and stuff like that so whether the chap did know this was not a, an 850 or what I'm not too sure but uh, it doesn't matter anyway well I'm happy with that all the plugs are dry there's no oily there so that lets me think that there's not a problem with um, uh, the bores at all so that's a good sign let's get a 10 mil socket I would imagine that I'm gonna probably put a new clutch in this anyway so it shouldn't be too tight, these. One, two. There again, I've seen pattern clutches on the eBay and they look nothing like this. This looks like a, probably a normal type of clutch that you'd get. Like a L -U -L -U K is it, I think? So that looks like one of those sort of clutches, which is a good thing. So this may be even be a new clutch, but as a matter of course, I think I'm going to put a new clutch in it anyway. That's why I don't really like to buy new old stock brakes and stuff like that for the simple reason being you don't know how good the glue is that retains the actual fiber material to the metal over the years i've had seen many many brake discs uh sorry brake pads and uh brake shoes come apart where they've lost the glue and their old new old stock sort of thing so it's not something that i would look upon using for something like brakes and even that little Reliant 
van that I've just sold the Reliant Robin, which is now in Denmark, by the way, if any of you are, are interested in that. The bloke drove 2,100 kilometers to get here. And uh, that will be restored over in Denmark. They're going to restore it back to original, put it in back into its original pinky, purpley sort of color. And that is quite a rare. Apparently, you can't get no spares for them over there. So uh, the, the chap from Denmark actually done a, a round trip and um, went up to a Reliant supplier for spares in Worcestershire, I think he said. Or Warwickshire, one of the two. I'm not too sure. But uh, he said he got quite a few spares anyway. So, And he's never seen my YouTube videos. <laughs> Right, okay. One more to go, I think. Right, well, I can see the clutch. Is there one more down there? Always one more, isn't there? It should be held on by a couple of uh, dowels anyway, so when I take this last bolt out, it shouldn't drop. Right, okay. Although it has come forward. There we go. Just sitting on the dowels. Oops, there we go. Well, I'd say that's definitely been overheating. As you can probably see there, look. It looks like a pretty new clutch, but it's very shiny. And it's got a burn mark along there. So it's probably been slipping. It's dry, it's not got any contamination on it at all, but uh, there don't appear to be anything wrong with the pressure plate, but uh, it's got... Uh, no, there's no blue in on it, but it's been a bit snatchy, so everything looks to be okay though. And it looks to be a pretty new clutch, so but I won't be using that again, obviously. And these are marked anyway. I don't know whether you can see that, but it actually says when you put these back on it, it says flywheel side. So that would go towards the flywheel there. I'll have an inspect of the flywheel. I mean I've had these before where um they've got all sort of loads and loads of cracks in them. And they've gone blue with uh, obviously where people have slipped the clutch and whatever. And then you've had to have them re-skimmed. So, but this one actually don't look too bad. It looks all right. I will sort of roughen all that texture up anyway with some um, wet and dry paper or something. And uh, I may or may not take the flywheel on it. I'm not off yet. I'm not too sure. There don't appear to be any leaking from the back of the um, crankshaft oil seal. But I probably will check that. I'll probably undo these uh, lock tabs there undo these bolts, take the flywheel off, and uh, I'll see if the crankshaft also is leaking anyway. So anyway, that's the clutch off. Right, okay, oh, look at the state of me, look. I've got gloves and I don't wear them, I don't know why. Let me set things up and then uh, we'll take it to the next step. Oh, that was a sticky little number, and you couldn't get to these bottom bolts with a big socket. I had to use a little socket wrench. Well, everything seems to be in order there. It's the uh, inlet and exhaust manifolds there, as you can probably see. I will have all new gaskets for these, so uh, I'm not worried about them being damaged at all. Let's move that to one side. Right, so I could take the water pump off now. Again, I'm going to probably change all these anyway. I don't want to leave old stuff on with old bearings in and stuff, so... I'm going to remove that now, probably need a 13mm spanner for that. So on this one, four bolts hold the water pump housing on. And you can only really access them with a, a spanner. You can get a ring on them, so that's not too much of a problem. Just remember that the one this side holds the uh, uh, alternator or dynamo bracket, as you can see there. So it's just something to be mindful of when you put it back on again. And I like keeping all the nuts and bolts in their relative orders. And it's just having a big box of nuts and bolts can uh, get a bit monotonous if you don't actually mark them or put them back in their existing holes. 
and as I said as you can probably see this one's got the uh, the plastic free fan cooling blade on it as opposed to the two blade metal one on the 600 engine which I've got and one thing to remember as well and half of the reason why I'm, I am choosing to probably go with this one as opposed to the 600 is that uh, the 600 did really really smoke so there was obviously going to be need uh, sort of rebar work probably on that or something so I'm not too sure and this one looking at the plug colours is absolutely perfect so I'm hoping to get away without reboring it right okay so that should be that move that around there that's all the four bolts on there I think yep definitely all, all of them so a little tap <laughs> is easier said than done it's coming apart I think it is moving perhaps needs something a little bit more firmer to give a shock more of a shock value I'll try the wooden hammer yeah and that's a bit better I think I'm hoping that the pulley doesn't have to come off I wouldn't have thought so I thought that would have come off as one complete body um, it's probably stuck on the corrosion on the studs to be honest with you Oh my god, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and when I look in there, I can see loads of corrosion. I've just broke that, look. So that's another thing I'm going to have to source now. Oh, don't you just love old parts? Could put some penetrating spray on the sp uh, screw holes, I suppose, just to try and release things up a little bit. I'm pretty sure it's stuck on the. Uh, corrosion on the threads as I say because there is a gap appeared put some inside as well can't hurt can it all right so good technique Hit it backwards and forwards. There we go. Oh, just unfortunate there. There we go. Yeah, it was a corrosion on the bolts. I can see it there, look. Let's uh, pull that out. Yeah, that's, I mean, look at the state of that impeller, look, and the rust on in, inside that. Although, to be honest with you, the bearings don't feel too bad. But obviously, I've broke the body of it now, and uh, that means I've got to source another one of them. That's got to be stripped down. Just undo the thermostat housing. Again, it's just nice to see the sort of condition of the engine. I mean, that, that what we've seen there is purely down to uh, standing and... Uh, in the waterways and having corrosion on it so you you will get that and that's why i don't really like to see people do old start cold starts over sort of engines that have stood for 40 years and they just try and put some fresh fuel in it put a spark on it and hope they'll run because you just don't know what extra damage you're going to be doing to these cars i know it's a bit of fun to watch something that's old come to life but you're probably doing irreparable damage right well that come off nice and easy I mean, all these parts will be sandblasted back up again. But to be honest with you, this engine is in far better condition than when I took the Triumph Claim apart. That was absolutely terrible. There's a the thermostat. I mean, the corrosion in that was absolutely terrible, but you probably see in there, not much at all, so I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to take the head off, as you know. Because we want to see if we've got any damage to the bores at all. And the only way to do that is to take the head off, really. 
So I'm just going to whiz off the uh, crankshaft pulley. That means that then I can remove all the uh, timing chest uh, bolts and uh, that allows me then to um, see the state of the timing chain. Yeah, got it. There we go. There's always a way around a problem. Lucky that weren't very tight actually. So let's just undo that. Got lubrication. Bit of penetration. There we go. There we go. Uh, another piece of the puzzle that had to come off. Right, let's put that to one side. And that then leaves the timing chest cover bolts. Could be seven sixteenths. That's the one. So yeah. You really need Imperial Toolkit if you're going to work on one of these. Metrics don't always cut the mustard. I know there's not a lot in it, but uh, definitely with engineering, you need to uh, have the right size sockets and spanners for the job. Near enough isn't good enough. You might as well have blinking cheap old nasty ones that round the nuts off if you're going to go down that road and start trying to use the wrong ones. Okay, that's all the bolts out by the looks of it. No, there's one more in the bottom there, but it's loose. So I'm hoping again, this will just tap off. Right, okay. There we go. There's a seal on the front of there, which I'm gonna to need to change anyway. And there's the old timing chain, as you can see there. There's the little tensioner arm inside there, which literally just levers on the chain at the lower level there. So we may or may not need to replace that. There's a couple of grooves in it, so uh, would be nice to probably change that. I'm not too sure. We'll have a look at that a bit later on. So I've undone the rocker bolts and I'm just going to lift the uh, rockers off now and underneath them you'll have push rods and push rods are the things that operate the camshaft or from the camshaft and in turn as the camshaft rotates inside the engine pushes each one of these things up in a certain sequence which leans on these little rockers here which is why they're called rockers and that in turn pushes the valves down and lets either fuel in or exhaust fumes out and what we also need to do is to remove the push rods which are these things here let me show you these little what you call like plunger looking things here and they literally wear in a certain way so when you take them out you probably see that oh that's a bit grubby at the moment I've got a piece of card here and that's going to sit that way I've put front of the engine there with an F on the piece of card and one two three four five six seven eight numbers one way and each push rod so this will be number one at the front of the engine that one i'll make a hole and push it through there and push that in there like that and that lets me know now that that's number one push rod so i will always have this as a reference to put the right ones back in the holes where they come out of so let's just do the rest of them all right so there's my eight push rods all in the right order i can now put them to one side now all I've got to do is to undo the cylinder heads, the remaining cylinder head bolts. Uh, you really want to be doing these in sequence. Um, I've undone a few already actually, so I've cheated a little bit, but uh, we're now going to carry on and undo the rest of these, so bear with us. Right, okay. That is all the head bolts out. It should be just a matter of gently tapping this off and it should come off, but I can see corrosion around some of them screws anyway. So, I'm just going to 
help them along their way. Now, ideally, it would come up easy, but if not, the only other option is to wind, hopefully, wind all the studs out by double locking them. <laughs> oh well, there you go. Oh right, well I couldn't leave it. It's nearly there. It was stuck on these studs this side. Might be a common thing on these. So I had no other option but to resort to the, the lump hammer. <coughs> oh. Yeah, this must be a common thing this. There's no way you can get leverage on this side of the engine. So let's go back to no, we carry on. We're nearly there. That's it, we got it. There we go. Oh, lovely. Well, there we go. Poor stinks. Let's lay that down there. Right, well, I would imagine this has never been off. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. There's a bit of corrosion in, in the bore, but that's obviously due to lack of use. Nothing, I don't think, that uh, warrants the rebuild. And uh, I think we could probably get away with uh, maybe a hone of the balls, maybe, just to get the surface rust off the top there. And uh, clean the pistons up, I suppose, when we take them out. So there you go, there's the cylinder head. Uh, it appears to be pretty good colour in there. There's no real signs of anything, no detonation or anything, so. What do you think, darling, is it all right? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Right, that's it then, I uh, I didn't want to give in. I had to let it soak a little bit longer, obviously, but uh, there you go, a little bit of perseverance. And just knowing where to hit it, it's very easy to get tempted to try and lever it up when you get a little gap here and then you damage your aluminium block and your aluminium face on your cylinder head. You've just got to let the lubrication do its work and if that would have failed, I did try and doing a stud. I couldn't undo the studs by locking two nuts together. And my next option would have been tomorrow, get some heat on it and heat it up and then lube, heat, lube, heat. And that's the way I would have gone about that. Right, okay then, hope you now have enjoyed this video. Bit of a messy one, this one, but uh, at least I've got something to work with now. And I'll see, it's like, what darling? I know I've got dirty hands, darling. So I'll see you in the next video, and until then, say bye bye. Not to me, to them. Bye bye, everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>